Hello, my dear students. This is Dr. Satish Polsettiwar from MIT World Peace University School of Pharmacy, Pune, India. Today, I am going to talk on the topic pharmaceutical suspension, that is part two, on the topic understanding of DLVO theory and jitter potential of suspension stabilizations. So, I hope you must have gone through my the previous video, that is part one, pharmaceutical suspension, where we studied about, where we discussed about uh, what is suspension, how suspension have been classified into heterogeneous systems. Defloculate, procolated system. Then we discuss about the ideal characteristics of suspension. Also, we have discussed about the uh, composition of this uh, that suspension. That in suspension, we added wetting agent, we added a suspending agents, flocculating agents, viscosity promoter, sweeteners, coloring agents, and buffering agents. These are some composition of uh, suspension we discussed in last uh, my videos. Also, we have been discussed about ideal characteristics. What are the ideal characteristics that is required for the uh, pharmaceutical suspension? Uh, in today's uh, session, we will uh, mo mainly focus on understanding of DLV theory, how DLV theory and the jitter potentials are useful uh, to make uh, pharmaceutical suspension more stable in with respect to chemical and physical stability. So let's begin with this topic. So you all discuss about pharmaceutical suspension is a biphasic liquid heterogeneous doses form in which drug is uniformly distributed in liquid, mostly in purified water, having particle size attained to 30 micrometers, that is micron we call. So we discuss about heterogeneous systems, it is being divided into two suspension that is coarse suspension and colloidal suspension. It could be nano suspension or uh, fine colloidal suspension. The only size is getting varied. So we are totally talk uh, we are talking on the uh, discussing on the suspension, coarse suspension where it has been divided into flocculated and deflocculated depending on that uh, we call it as uh, whether the flow is going to form or not. So in okay, so we'll discuss in details about this. Okay. Based on electrokinetic nature of properties, because in suspension you, we must understood the electro potential, electrokinetic potential, in order to uh, make the stable uh, suspension. There are two types of pharmaceutical suspension. If you see, talk about the features, uh, sedimented particles. In terms of sedimented particles, if you talk about flocculated suspension, where form a network-like structures and separate individual particles are there in case of deflocculated suspensions. Okay, so in the flocculated suspension, what happens here? The particles are dispersed uniformly throughout that biophysic bi system. Okay, and the settling velocity of this particle is very very high in case of flocculated suspension. And when you mix it or when you, you apply the shear stress, it will again redisperse and coming to the original state. That's the property of flocculating agents. In case of a deflocculated suspension, so it uh, the sedimentation rates, velocity of sedimentation is very very slow. Uh, they fall according to size because we have to monitor, we have to uh, optimize that uh, flocculate, uh, deflocculation process by matching, by adjusting the density and viscosity of that suspension. So here the sedimentation rate is very very slow because we want to um, retain and uh, maintain that particles and solid materials in the that viscous system only, a dispersed system only for longer times. Okay, so but once it form a cakes, then it will be difficult to redisperse. That's the drawback of this system. But Next uh, uh, difference is a boundary. If you talk about the boundary, a distinct boundary between sediment and supernatant. But here, no distinct boundary between sediment and supernatant. You can you could see here, okay. And the appearance-wise, the deflocated suspension is very very. If you see, it is uh, good, uh, okay. But here, flocculated suspension you can see here, okay. Uh, turbid in nature, okay. This is turbid and this is uh, we call it as a clear in nature. In case of supernatant, but appearance-wise, the deflocated suspension is very very. Nice, a very very good we can say, a pleasant in nature, okay. But here unpleasant in nature, influence flocculated because see when you are going to pour into the suitable container, uh, some parts or some uh, so the suspension is going to be uh, in contact with your bottles, your containers. That's why it is uh, appearance is very very unpleasant, uh, not pleasing in appearance. That's why uh, viscosity wise, if you see it's a high viscosity in flocculated suspension. Uh, in deflocculated, we maintain the viscosity at optimum level. So as to bring the particles, uh, maintain the repulsive force properly. So as to maintain the that particle in within the system only, within dispersed system only. We are not going to allow uh, that particle to settle down hmm, as early as possible. We are maintaining it for longer periods. If you talk about the rheological properties uh, in flocculated system, it behaves like plastic and pseudoplastic flow. What is plastic and pseudoplastic flow? Means when you applying any shear stress. To any system, what will happen? The uh, viscosity is going to be decrease. That is called as plastic system. Uh, it means it follow the Newtonian flow, while pseudoplastic flow follow the non-Newtonian flow. Uh, here in deflocculated system, uh, it's uh, follow a dilatant rheological parameter. Means when you increase the viscous, uh, this shear, when you apply the shear stress, viscosity is going to be increase. Okay. 
so that we have discussed uh, sediment wise if you see loosely packed and doesn't form a cake uh, because see a sedimentation is very high and it form aggregates uh, loose aggregates okay but when you apply the cs to again come into original state that's the property of flocculated suspension uh, in case of deflocculated it form a closely packed and form a hard cake so that's why we have to maintain the optimum conditions of that particles okay it should be uh, present it should be dispersed properly uniformly in that dispersed system for longer times okay so that's why once it is being form a cake it difficult to redisperse like this but here it form a flux like this okay you could see here in this figure also okay then the uh, next topic of your uh, interest is understanding of dlvo theory what is this dlvo theory exactly okay one has to understood this theory this has theory theory was uh, discovered by this four scientists okay uh, that's why it is called as dlvo theory uh, this theory is very important to make uh, chemical and stable uh, suspension because suspension are thermodynamically unstable you have to make it uh, stable by using certain principle so look at this uh, you have the solutes mostly suspension are we prepared for insoluble substance okay the substance a drug which are insoluble in nature we have the one solute which is there okay this is another solute a solute have some charge on their surface for example it have positive charge okay uh, there are four possibilities over here one a uh, same charge if the part two particles are there okay having same charge over there what will happen same charge huh? this is called as a repulsive force if you having same charge positive positive there is a force of repulsion act okay in deal with theory we take the x axis a uh, charges potential energy we take in millivolt because uh, this is nothing but the energy a uh, potential energy is going to be formed when you putting two solid into when you are putting uh, when you are adding any solute into any solvent a uh, potential energy is created so that is called as positive positive called the repulsive force another poss possibility is opposite charge if the solute and uh, your that dispersed present and disp uh, dispersed media has opposite charge then what will happen a uh, distance of two particle that's force of attraction going to work okay the particle is positive charge and the other particle is negative charge what will happen if you have two particles though both having opposite charge so it will going to uh, bind is that called as force of attraction is always more okay it's going to bind together and they form aggregates then another charge uh, is up, uh, same charge brought together if you brought okay uh, there are chances you can brought together to by adding some electrolytes okay so that is also one chances are there okay for well, adding electrolyte having same charge we could do that okay uh, look at this this is a one charge this particle you have this is another particle you have now you are bringing the both the charge particle together you are bringing over here what will happen means potential here maximum energy is here you are getting the maximum energy over here okay means at this level we called as this is called as your uh, energy which is required for dispersion uniformly distribution of that uh, your uh, dispersed medium okay now whatever you are bringing this molecule over here this level that is called as primary minimum this is the level we call as a primary minimum level where your uh, particles getting overlap each other this particle getting overlap each other and form a aggregates it could be loosely aggregate sometime uh, tightly bound aggregates if it is loosely, loosely aggregates then it will called as a flocculated suspension but this is not going to happen over here this is going to be happen over here in secondary minimum in primary minimum what happens here the the both the particles are overlap each other because of the charge opposite charge and they form a hard cake and that hard cake is going to be then you all of you know in the flocculated suspension hard cake is formed once hard cake is formed then it will uh, difficult to redisperse that's why you have to maintain below this primary minimum level whenever you are making the deflocated suspension always you have to keep into uh, take into note that the particle distance this distance should be maintained properly should not make it zero if you just make it zero then what happens practically is not possible to make it zero you have to make it uh, uh, some 10% 5% okay like that so you have to maintain this below this primary minimum to avoid the caking you are you are maintaining this zeta potential okay below this distance of two particle is very very important you have to maintain the distance of particle as per uh, we call as it should have uh, that force repulsive force so as to Uh, for that you have to maintain the, you have to just optimize the density and viscosity okay and this is the secondary minimum where in flocculating suspension it follow the secondary minimum graph okay this graph you can see it follow this graph okay secondary minimum is still this level we call that okay where the flock is not going to uh, that means uh, a cake is not going to form only what is happening only flocks are fl aggregating this flocks are aggregating but again redispersing after giving the shear stress that is we call as uh, how deal with here is important to uh, make you uh, that uh, that means you can prepare the stable suspension 
Understanding jitta potential. Now next part is jitta potential. How, what is jitta potential? Okay, jitta potential is nothing but the electrokinetic potential. When you putting, uh, when you are mixing the uh, solid into the any solvent, okay, what will happen? Some electric potentials are generated. So why jitta potential is called jitta potential? Because jitta is nothing but obtained from the Greek word, okay? Because potential is denoted by jitta. That's why jitta potentials. So there are three chances are there. What will happen when you put the solute? This is a solute having positive charge. If you are putting, if you are transferring or uh, incorporating this solute into the here NaCl solution, sodium chloride solution, having the different charge, sodium have positive charge, chloride have negative charge. Now you are putting this solute. What will happen? This solute will, uh, this solvent will occupy the solute charge. Okay, depending on this number of charge are there. Okay, uh, first is adsorption of ions. The first case here, the adsorption of ions takes place. Okay, the all ions positive positive for here this negative charge attract to positive charge so likewise it will try to attract over that ions another case would be like ionization of functional group it could be because of ionization if this ion is having this particular solute is having a coh group it will going to be ionized and it will be called as ionized with that functional groups that is another charge third charge is difference in dielectric constant of liquid and solid this is not uh, as much important okay but only two cases are very important we must understood how the ions getting uh, means how these particular functional groups are going to be adsorbed on this solute. That's the first chance you can see the where tightly bound layer is formed because if the charge are there this particular charge is going to adsorb on this solute okay then remaining charge will be left over here. So that is called as tightly bound layer okay it will maintain this uh, we call as repulsive force attraction force and repulsive force both force is going to be maintained because data potential is nothing but the magnitude of data potential indicate a degree of electrostatic repulsion between the adjacent between between the adjacent and similarly charged particle and similarly charged particle this adjacent and similarly charged particle okay uh, in the dispersion media now look at this a second layer is going to form okay this is the first layer this is called as force of attraction is very very high okay that's why it's called as tightly bound layer now another layer is going to form that is called as shear layer a resulting charge because other ions are there other remaining ions, ions are there that, that is also going to be form a second layer that is called as shear layer a resulting charge layer we call it as that is called as B layer we can say okay and this difference between these two layer is called as jitta potential always we have to maintain we have to measure the jitta potential of this two layer and third layer is where all ions getting then equally distributed and form a neutral region that is called as both ions are similar now you see here the ions are proportionally divided properly that is called as electro neutral regions we call as uh, neutral regions okay and jitta potential what is jitta potential difference between this tightly bound layer and shear layer called as jitta potential it's called electro potential mostly measured in millivolt you could see here over. this is the pure particles having this ions this is second layer difference between these two layer called as jitta potentials this tightly bound layer and shear layer okay because this layer this is we call as behave as a flux this will uh, does not allow that solute okay this uh, flux okay other flux to come together okay so this is called as tightly bound layer and this is the uh, called as resulting charge layer and this is a neutral layer this is this is the different three layers is going to form in so your suspension uh, what is stability behavior in colloid depending on jitter potential this is the uh, good stability which is having more than 61 40 to 60 is good stability if we have the jitter potential is plus minus 40 60 then it is having good stability we could say okay this is the measure in millivolt difference between these two just now we discuss about that then uh, this is another uh, way we can show how okay you have discussed double layer and uh, this primary and minimum we uh, in deflocated suspension we always uh, maintain below primary minimum okay if you not below, uh, maintain below primary layer what, what, what will happen this will get aggregates and this will form a hard cake so always maintain this level okay secondary minimum is mostly happen in your flow collet suspension where the flows are in present in the, the secondary minimum range only as you can see over here how the minimum energy and distance of attraction how it could affect on the electrostatic repulsion there is another diagram because see here you can see you have to maintain this layer okay this is the your area where you have to work okay this is the monophasic potassium phosphate negatively charged percolating agent and the suspension is bisphosphate subnitrate which is positively charged how you can maintain by adding certain agents this is the your optimized region okay where we will get the stable suspension here like this you can see so aggregations are there but again redisperse okay this is the mind map how we can remember uh, these particular things okay you all of you know uh, in case particular deflocated suspension jitter potential should be always high okay in case of def deflocated jitter potential always 
required a high. Why high? Because it will maintain the stability. Okay. You all of you know more the.